think there's an elephant sized hole in the rewilding myth that we tell ourselves. The thing about rewilding is it's based on the idea of the wood pasture. It's a sound idea and there's quite a lot of science behind it. Wood pasture is the idea that there in the past was a landscape in, the Euro in Europe and the UK which was similar to the Serengeti. So a lot of the stories which we were told in the past involved high canopy woodland, so primitive woods which covered the landscape in England. Things like Robin Hood and many other stories, Tales of Grimm, they told of high canopy woodland, dense woodland covering all of Europe. But if you look at um, some of the scientific evidence now, what you can see is that there's increasing support for the idea that a Serengeti-like landscape was what you would actually find. So trees scattered here and there, herbivores, large herbivores lo roaming across the, um, across the plains and then predated by large predators. So this is a really sound theory. The thing about the Serengeti is that what you find there is elephants. And what you don't find in the UK, and what you don't find in Europe is elephants. But in the past, in Europe and, and in the UK, you did find elephants. Now, at some point in the past, they were wiped out. Um, there's a tree in my, in my field, which is a very interesting tree. It grows up out of the, out of the hedge here. Might not seem particularly unusual, is this one here. It's an ash, so it's suffering a bit from ash dieback, but you can see it's surrounded by this bramble here. And part of the reason why it succeeded is the fact that it's protected by this dense thicket all around it. That's why it's been able to grow up protected while it was a small sapling from the overgrazing by deer, which are quite common on this landscape. Why, why is this relevant? Well, as landscapes succeed, as they um, pass from, from what you see here, from a, from a pond, a bare pond, up to low plants, like here, you can see succession occurring right here. As they grow up into, up into hedgerows and then further, they grow up into, up into trees. They need some protection from grazing in order to succeed into, into trees. And we know that this is the case because if you look around you, you can see in the landscape, you can see trees which are protected just like this, just like this ash over here. Um, they're protected from grazing and they have succeeded up in the hedgerow. Eventually what will happen is these trees will grow up and shade out the hedges and turn into high canopy woodland. The problem is, how does that high canopy woodland then turn back into grassland? How does it then turn back into this kind of habitat here, the Serengeti, which used to be so common? Well, in the past, large animals like bison, like elephants, used to break up the landscape. Well, the thing about bison is, yes, they do cause some damage to smaller trees. They do ring barking, which um, causes small tree, well, it causes large tree death, but on a small scale. And they do damage to small trees on a large scale. But the thing about elephants is they do damage to large trees on a large scale. And that's what you really need in order to replicate the kind of experience, the kind of landscape which you find in the Serengeti. Now, how do we know this? Well, what, what you can do is you can create exclosures, which are parts of the landscape which are fenced off um, to prevent elephants from getting in. And what you find in those parts of the landscape is that they do succeed into a high canopy woodland. So what this shows us is that without the presence of elephants, the landscape does naturally succeed into forest. So why is this important in the UK? Well, in the UK, we don't have elephants. And for many, many years, we haven't had elephants. But there is a lot of evidence that in the past, even a few hundred years ago, we had a wood pasture landscape, even in natural environments. And how did this happen? Well, the thought is that actually humans have been managing the landscape for a very long time. 
and Benedict MacDonald and James Rebanks have suggested that humans have taken the role of elephants in the UK's landscape. They've been chopping down trees, they've been managing the landscape, because there are potential ways in which forests can revert into grassland. They involve things like fire, they involve things like flood, but in the UK fire simply isn't a process which destroys large tracts of woodland. Wind is another option. Wind can destroy large tracts of woodland, but a study in Minnesota found that once every 1,200 years a large area of woodland was, um, t t every, every area of woodland was turned over approximately every 1,200 years. Now, every 1,200 years is not enough to make a significant impact and to create the kind of grasslands which you see here. Say it takes 100 to 200 years for grassland to turn back into woodland. If it takes 1,200 years for that forest for that woodland to turn back into grassland, that means the majority of the landscape will be woodland. And that's just not we see it, what we see in the um, fossil record. So, so Benedict MacDonald and James Rebanks, who Benedict wrote Rebirding, which is a very good book, and James Rebanks is a very prominent uh, farmer in the rewilding and regenerative agriculture movement. They suggested that um, elephants have taken, uh, been taken over by um, humans in, in the UK landscape and humans do things like coppicing. They chop down trees at the base causing them to shoot back up again. They do things like logging, they take out large areas of woodland and they do things like agriculture, um, like silver pasture. They grow orchards and then graze cattle underneath. And this kind of practice is extremely good for wildlife. It creates a very biodiverse environment because it replicates the kind of environment which we've had in this country for many hundreds of years, many thousands of years, and therefore which the ecosystem, all of the biodiversity is adapted to. So that's why I think there's a hole in the rewilding story. I think we should be talking more about how humans are important in, their, in the rewilding story, how elephants used to be an important ecosystem engineer in the UK and in Europe, and how humans can now replicate the kind of activity which elephants used to replicate and create uh, landscapes which are similar to the Serengeti within the UK to recreate that lost biodiversity.